Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said his government's decision to expel a Chinese diplomat this week sends a message to Beijing that Canada will not be intimidated. Meanwhile, it's been 14 months since Russia's war on Ukraine began. A number of EU and NATO nations have expelled Russian diplomats from their countries in response. But according to the latest figures, there are more than 80 Russian diplomats still in Canada and nobody has been expelled. Here to discuss this is Ihor Michael Chishin, the CEO and Executive Director of the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress. It's good to see you again, Ihor. Thanks for having me. So what do you make of this? Because within a week of the start of this war, a lot of NATO countries began declaring some from Russian diplomats as persona non grata. Canada hasn't taken any action. What That's right. Yeah, I have a chart here from our team that uh, about 600 Russian diplomats have been expelled from various EU-NATO partners uh, for a variety of reasons. And... Uh, We've been talking about this for a long time because uh, based on intelligence reports from Canada's parliamentary committee, from other intelligence agencies around the world, uh, we know that the Russian uh, diploma, diplomatic service is not here on a benevolent mission, that uh, many of them are spies and intelligence agents. So why do you think, I, you, I saw you quoted as saying Canada is being overly cautious with this approach to Russia. Why that level of overcaution in your view? Uh, inexplicable in a way. Uh, we, we are told that... Uh, that uh, there's sort of a fear that if Canada does anything uh, in, in a variety of ways, that there will be retaliation. And so uh, that seems to be a crippling fear for our global affairs folks uh, that, uh, you know, that is preventing us from doing anything. So we're, we're saying very clearly that, you know, the, the Russian diplomats, and I use that in air quotes here in Canada, uh, we know that they are active in promoting online hate and disinformation. They actively engage in, in every effort they can to uh, denigrate support for Ukraine and Canada's support for Ukraine, and they attack our community regularly. So we don't understand uh, why they're still here. The, the, you know, the disparity is pretty stark when you think about it, like uh, not to downplay the foreign interference in elections and targeting of MPs, but it took you know, uh, a, a leak of an intelligence report and a lot of political pressure to get a single Chinese sure. diplomat expelled. And here it is a full-blown invasion of a Canadian ally that we are supporting financially, militarily, and through humanitarian assistance. And yet they've, they've not taken this approach. I mean, what message does that send to Russia? What message does it send to Ukraine? I think it sends a message to Russia that they can continue business as usual, that uh, their, their teams, their ambassadors, their agents, their spies are, are free to roam around Canada and do as they want and foment hate uh, in an online and real way. Uh, we see that they're harassing the peaceful protesters that are out there every day, uh, a really dedicated group of peaceful protesters here in Ottawa outside the embassy and in Montreal every day there's people there. Uh, as they are in every capital around the world and we just uh, are baffled by the silence on this uh, and we're baffled by the sort of uh, that Canada has tied its hands and, and not being able to do anything about it uh, when these people are these Russian you know, diplomats again in air quotes are, are active in their uh, promotion of of their agenda and which is anti-Canadian anti-Ukrainian what would you like to see I mean I've seen the Conservatives many times in uh, in question period call for an expulsion of the ambassador and the argument coming back as you've talked about the ramifications is Canada does want its embassy in Moscow shut down it still sees, sees value in having diplomats inside the country how far would you like to see them go like a targeted uh, expulsion or just clear out all 80 our long-standing position is that there's no uh, purpose for Canada to have diplomatic or other relationships with Russia. We've seen Russia being, ex you know, been expelled from the Arctic Council and other uh, kind of uh, multilateral forums. So there's no, there's no benefit to Canada. There's nothing we're getting out of any engagement with Russia in in any forum. Um, so we we do think Russia is a terrorist state, and like Iran. Uh, we can take extreme measures in extreme circumstances when we know that this state entity is committing genocide and war crimes, that we should end our relationship with them, which means ending their 80 people here. And if that means that the Canadian mission in Moscow closes, then that's what we should do. You don't see any value whatsoever in Canada having eyes and ears inside Moscow to see what's happening there on the ground? I haven't seen anything or been told about anything that uh, particularly uh, that our, our mission there is able to do. I think that uh, the environment to operate in, in Russia is pretty limited for all Western diplomatic missions. I think Putin understands that Canada is on Ukraine's side, as, as are all of the allies, and I don't, 
I don't think there's a lot of room to maneuver there. And, and I, I think if we want to, you know, read the, ra the latest outrageous statements of Vladimir Putin, uh, that's mm -hmm. what the internet's for. You know, we're having sort of back-to-back -back conversations on the show tonight about how to deal with China, how to deal with Russia, two members, you know, of UN Security Council and Canada seeking a Russia's seat. Russia's the chair on the, of the UN yes, Security yes, Council. Yes, yes, exactly. And, and Canada seeking a position on the UN Human Rights Commission. And these, do you think any of that plays into these decisions, the reluctance to stand up the way some other of our allies have? Potentially. I mean, I think we've seen Ambassador Ray at the UN speak very strongly about mm -hmm. the farce that is the UN Security Council chair being Russia while it is you know, launching missiles into Ukrainian civilians' cities and killing people. So I think, I think there is a level of, of international politics, but I think we can be very clear when we need to be. And I think we, we can obviously see the evidence with our eyes of what is happening there. So I don't I think there's a disconnect and there's a, that that's the, the the silence that we're seeing is seeing a sort of an inability to process other options um, besides you know, it's one thing to be outspoken it's another thing to watch what's happening but we don't seem to be able to do anything about it right well they've done something now about China at least with yeah. Zhao Wei with with that expulsion uh, I mean do you hope this is the icebreaker do you think this could get the ball rolling I mean is, is there a specific I mean the high-level harassment and the misinformation that Russia is doing on social media for example that's fairly typical of, of their behavior is there, you know, a specific diplomat or person you could point to that maybe could be the Zhao Wei of the Russian mission here? I don't have those. You know, I mean, I, right. I could read you the name of, the, of all these sure. people who work yeah. there, but I, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, kind of give them that that dignity. I think that the the mission, you know, the Russian diplomatic mission here in Canada, it should be reviewed. I, I'm sure our intelligence services have some information about what their activities have been, and uh, we would be very happy to see some strong uh, consequences that match, you know, the strong work that the government's done to support Ukraine. Right. So you're testifying at the uh, Foreign Affairs Committee tomorrow. What's your core message going to be? Well, we're there to talk about sanctions, uh, and sanctions means enforcement. So, you know, like this issue, it's, it's one thing to put people's names on a list, but we have to enforce it, we have to track it, we have to investigate it. You know, uh, the Russians are doing things like changing addresses of their companies and changing names of individuals or putting assets into the names of other people, such as their children or their mother-in-laws or whatever. So, you know, we can't let these things outwit us as, as allies of Ukraine and as Canadians. Do you think we're, we're effective as a country on, on the sanctions regime we have in place? There's been a lot of assets frozen but not necessarily seized mm -hmm. just yet and turned over, and I know that's the plan, and I know these things take a bit of time. But do you think overall, broadly, Canada's sanction regime against Russia has been effective? I think before the war, years ago, we, were, we spent a lot of time talking to Canadian officials about the need to catch up to where uh, the EU and the US were going, and the UK now. Uh, I think we're there, we're, we're actively you know, putting dozens of names a week, if not more, on sanctions lists. I think the gap that's emerged with Iran and in other contexts is you know, the, the enforcement mechanism that these people on the sanctions list are don't just sit there and take it they're very cleverly working around it through third parties through all sorts of shell corporations so we need the, we need the capacity i think the government has announced that capacity to engage and actively investigate and and make sure that they're effective uh, beyond just the initial name list